like, share, subscribe. Hey y'all, welcome back. Number 43 says in the xy plane, the point 8 comma 10 lies on the graph of the function y equals f of x. Which of the following points must lie on the graph of this transformed function? So let's go through each of these transformations and describe um, what they're doing. Okay, so f of bx minus 3, uh, or c plus d. So I'm basically just going to give generic names for each one of these parameters that will transform whatever function the original one is. So, um, so yeah, so each one of these, let's describe what each one does here. So A is going to cause what we call a vertical stretch. So what it's going to do is it's going to stretch each of the coordinates away from the x-axis vertically. And essentially what you do if you have got a coordinate and you want to know how this number affects the coordinate um, is you're going to multiply the y value by a, okay? So you can see that's what we're going to have to do here. All right, b, and we don't have a b value here, but in case you end up with a problem that has a b value, b is going to cause a vertical, um, and really, I'm sorry, not vertical, a horizontal. And I said stretch here. Um, it's actually only going to be a stretch if this number is bigger than 1. If it's smaller than 1, it's going to cause a compression. Um, so just to, just to write a little bit more generically, I'm just going to call it a dilation. So dilation could be a stretch or a compression, depending on what, a, what, what the A value is. Uh, B is going to cause a horizontal dilation, but it's going to do so kind of in the opposite direction that the vertical dilation does. So in other words, like if B is like 5, instead of multiplying all the X values by 5, you'll actually divide them. Uh, it causes a compression whenever that number is bigger than 1, rather than... A, 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 a stretch. So it's just sort of weird how this works out. I'm not going to kind of get into the weeds and kind of prove why this is true, but the operations that are going on inside of the parentheses here are going to have the opposite effect uh, of what they have. So in other words, like instead of multiplying my x values by b here, I'm actually going to divide uh, the x values by uh, b. All right, now C and D are going to be our horizontal and vertical shifts, respectively. Uh, they're also known as translations, and basically what they do is they just shift the point either to the left, right, up, or down. Um, C is going to cause a horizontal shift, and again, that C is inside the parentheses, so it kind of has the opposite effect of what you might think. Um, actually, you know what? Let's, let's make this a plus. Okay. So C is going to cause a horizontal um, shift or translation. And effectively what you do with the, the, the coordinates here is you're going to subtract. You're going to do the opposite of what you see here. Okay. So if it's plus, you're going to subtract C um, from the X value. And then finally, D is going to cause a vertical shift. And that is going to do exactly what it says it's going to do. If it says plus D, you're going to move it up. So we're going to add D to the Y values. OK, so here's basically our rules okay, of what each one of these does. Now let's kind of get into the order here, because sometimes the order matters, sometimes it doesn't. But basically, what you want to make sure to do is do your horizontal shift first, okay? And you want to do your vertical shift last, okay? Everything else, like these two, the order doesn't really matter. Um, we don't really have to worry about it because the, we don't have a horizontal dilation anyway. Um, but yeah, you want to make sure to do this horizontal shift first and the vertical shift last. Any other transformations you have, can come in between those, and the order doesn't really make a difference. Um, but yeah, these are going to be what you do. So if our coordinate is 8, 10, that's what we started with, first we're going to take care of the horizontal shift. 
So we're going to do the opposite of what's being done here. Um, so this, if we've got, let's go ahead and write this out. Um, we've got 2f of 1x uh, minus 3 uh, plus 5. These are, the, these are the different transformations we're going to do. So first is going to be that horizontal shift. So we're going to shift to the right three units. Okay, so we're going to add three to the x value. I can spell. <laughs> okay, that's going to be our first step. And then we want to go down. We've got a vertical dilation. So we want to stretch. Um, we want to vertically stretch by a factor of two. Okay, and in this case, we're going to multiply the x values. I'm sorry, the y values by two. And then finally, we're going to do the, uh, the vertical shift here. So we're going to shift up five units. So we're going to add five to the y value. Okay, so we're just kind of, you know, I just wanted to like really explicitly lay out what steps we're going to take here, why we're taking those steps, so that you kind of understand how to work a similar problem. So we're going to shift, we're going to add three to the x value. So let's do that first. So 8 plus 3 is going to be 11. Then we're going to, here, I'll, I'll, I'll bring this over here so you can kind of see what, you know, the kind of the order of my steps here. Uh, then we want to multiply the y value uh, by 2. Okay, so we're going to multiply 10 by 2. 10 times 2 is going to be 20. And then we want to shift up 5 units. We're going to add 5 to the y value. So we end up at 1125. And so our answer for 43 is going to be D. I mean, not D. Wow. E. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the answer to 43 is E. And that's it for 43. Uh, thanks for watching, y'all, and I hope you have a great day.